surrender before you to the Lord. Because you are great and great is his grace. We thank you for your love, our Lord. Thank you for loving us first. Thank you for loving us first. Lord, you stand to gain and God. Lord, you're so kind. You're so kind, Lord. You loved us even when we were deep in sin, Lord. You loved us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father.
Because I have a
Father says, come. Come to me. It's an invitation to come to me. Come to me and drink from me. So that I can heal you this morning. And I can restore you. And I can remove that hurt and I can remove that pain. And I can remove that anger and I can remove that animosity. Because I don't want nothing standing in the way of you to come to me. I want you to let go. Let go. And allow God to come in and allow God to enter in. And allow God to have his way in your life. Allow God to have his way in your mind. Allow God to have his way in your heart. Allow God to have his way in your soul. Allow God to have his way in your spirit. Allow God. Allow God. Allow God to come in. Allow God. Allow God to do what he has to do. Allow God to do what only he can do inside of you. Allow God to come in.
you, Lord, as you play. Just everyone be silent and lift up your hands right now. Nobody say anything. Just be quiet. Allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you. Sometimes we spend so much time talking. We spend so much time and we don't allow Holy Spirit access to do what He needs to do in our lives. The Holy Spirit is a person. He's not an it, he's not a thing, he's not a that, he's not a this. He is the presence of God, he is the spirit of God. He is a person that dwells on the inside of you. And that's that's the person that you draw strength from, family. That's, that's the person that you draw strength from in you. Because he is the anointed one. He's the greater one that resides on the inside of you. So be still. Be still. Let him remove what needs to be removed. Let him heal what he needs to heal. Let him speak to you direction. The Holy Spirit is your advocate. The Holy Spirit is your comforter. The Holy Spirit is your counselor. The Holy Spirit is your mediator. Let him comfort you. Let him comfort you. Take comfort in him. Take comfort in him. He's your advocate because the battle is not yours, but the battle is the Lord's. And the victory belongs to you, family. <laughs> he says, rest in me. <laughs> For the joy of the Lord is your strength. <laughs> he says, come away.
are my Lord. You are my strength. You are my God. And I lay my life down. You are the one. My heart's desire. No one can compare to you. You may gracefully take your seat in this attitude of worship. Just stay, just stay where you are. Just stay where you are. Just stay where you are. Just sit and be quiet. Just sit and be quiet. Just sit in His presence. Don't say nothing. Don't look around. It's not your business. Come on. Just be quiet in His presence. Don't look around. Look, look to God. Look within you. Look within you. There's someone on the inside of you and his name is the Holy Spirit. He's your comforter. He's your counselor. He's your mediator. He's your advocate.
change. We don't have control over everything. But we know the one who is in control. He's in control. Revelation 1. He's in control. He's Alpha. And Omega. He's the beginning. He is the end. He is the first. And he is the last. But is he in between? The time when you're born and the time to die. But is it in between that time? Is determined by the choices that I make of how I choose to live this life. This life is given to me by God. Amen. This life is a precious life. What we see today that people take life for granted. People take life kind of like a joke. Because they feel they hold tomorrow. But he says, set your affection 
of things above. There is an above place. There is a place called above. And when you come to this place of above, you will see beyond. Amen. Your limitations beyond. Your lack beyond. Hallelujah. What's in front of you? There is a place called above. Hallelujah. And in that place you go beyond you'll see beyond and in that place you will do the far and above if you've been risen with Christ Colossians 3 verse 2 the Bible says seek those things above when you come into the presence of the Lord you, you, God, you can't seek the things around you. You gotta seek His face. Amen. You gotta set your affection on Him, Amen. not the problem, not the situation, not the circumstances. And don't only really seek Him when things go your way. Don't only want to seek it when things go your way. The Bible says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Amen. Call upon his name while he is here. He is near to you, beloved of God. And we have an opportunity to call upon his name. We have an opportunity to invite him. And he's given us this invitation. This invitation that is given to us in Isaiah 55, verse 1 and 2. He says, Come. Come and drink. Without money. Come and drink. Come and drink. Without money. There's some times that you're going to go through the valley of Baca. B-A-C-A. There's some times you're going to go through this valley of Baca. And this valley of Baca is called the valley of weeping. Sometimes you're going to go through this valley of Baca. The valley of weeping. Psalms 84 verse 6. Pass you through the valley of Baca. They make it a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with blessings. In other words, When the righteous pass through a time of suffering or calamity, they turn it into a time of refreshment. Listen to this. It is you that causes the shift. It is you that changes the atmosphere. Listen to me very carefully. You remain in a place of anger, and you remain in a place of doubt, and you remain in a place of fear. That's what the presence will become that of that environment. If you speak negative, you think negative. But if you speak life, you live life. Amen. That's why the scripture says, don't grow weary in well-doing. Your well-doing 
is you making sure that you're founded and that you are grounded in the place of Him. Hallelujah. He who dwells. Psalms 91, verse 1. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say, the Lord is my strength. He's my refuge. He's my strong tower. But I'm found in His presence. And I'm found in His place. I shut the body down of the noise and the echo. Of the happenings of life. And it was the voice of Jezebel that said to the prophet, This time tomorrow you shall die. And then the prophet realized it. Did he not realize he was the same God? The same God that so forth the demonstration of his miraculous power on Mount Carmel. The same God that answered by fire. That killed all the prophets of God. Same God. He knew that he was not alone. He knew that he had God with him. And it might feel like you're surrounded by so many things. So many people that don't celebrate you, that don't value you, that don't appreciate you, that feel like now that as you choose to journey with the Lord and you choose to go on this path of righteousness, your greatest missionary field is your house. Is your family. And sometimes they will not celebrate you. But you gotta know where you're going. You gotta come to this place to realize that I don't want to go with the crowd. Yeah. 
There is a lot of false doctrine. There is a lot of false anointings. And you've got to pray for a strong and discerning of spirit. You've got to become more discerning in the season Amen. to the spirit of God. And not be caught up with the anointing that has no fruit, no character, that just tickles that spot that you want to be tickled. Your feet, your emotions. You gotta move past that place. It's not about what I think, it's not about what I feel, what matters, what God says. Amen. Where God wants me to be. What God wants me to do. Come on, somebody. Amen. I'm gonna come to this place that I only gotta say what God wants me to say. And not be persuaded by anybody. Not be misled or misguided uh, by false doctrine. I'm going to come to this place and where I'm going to desire and hunger for spiritual things more. Hallelujah. My appetite, my craving must be that of the things of God. I want to know you. Philippians 3 verse 2. The Apostle Paul says, His presence is in this place. Philippians 3 verse 2. Let's turn there. Praise God. Holy Spirit, speak to us. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. We worship you. The apostle says, for my determined purpose, what is your determination this morning? Are you determined to go with God? Are you determined to do what God wants you to do? Are you determined to say what God wants you to say? Are you determined to forsake all that go with God? The apostle says, well, my determined purpose is that I may know him. The apostle says, I want to know God. Do you only know God is good when he comes through for you? And he's not good when he doesn't come through for you? When there's a delay, then you want to blame God. When things don't go your way, then you want to blame God. And you don't want to take responsibility for your actions. You don't want to take responsibility for your choices. But you want to blame God. And then you want to say where God is. Is what? To know God. Church of the living God. The remnant. The ecclesia. Kingdom people. Kingdom citizens. Kingdom ambassadors. Royalty. You are royalty. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You're not just a nation. I said you are a holy nation. Your determined purpose must be is to know God in the midst of every situation, in the midst of every circumstances, in the midst of your uh, 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 shift, in the midst of your transition. Your determined purpose must be to do what? To know God. To know God. To know God, to know God, to know Him. Amen. Not know the God of the religion. Not know the God of this world. The God of this world is not the true living God. Amen. The God of this world is a westernized God. Amen. That's what they've taken here. The true living God out of the schools. Family. Stop sleeping. 
Was it time of intense spiritual warfare? The greater the purpose for your life, the greater the pain. The greater the purpose for your life, the greater the pain. So your determined purpose must be to do what? To know Him. In other words, that I may come to this place where I progressively become more deeply. Amen. Is it that there must be a progress in your seeking? You see, when you spend time with God and you seek God, you cannot be on the same level. Amen. You, you cannot be at the same place. There has to be a progressive growing. But there's got to be a pressing in to the Father. The more the pressure, yummy, 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 yummy. The more the pressure, the more that pressure must push me Amen. into pressing into more of the Father's life. So there's a place you gotta come in God where you can hide in. Hide in the cliff. Away from distractions. Away from the false illusions that is twisting what God says. Because you can have everything around you, but 
walk in disobedience to God and His word. You know this. I'm blessed. You see, we've got a wrong concept of this. Remember we said last week, you're not blessed because you're going borrow money. Beloved, let us not walk away from the principles of God's word. Let us honor God. Honor God's word. Honor God's principles. And I'm telling you, family, the scripture says, and I'm just, I'm just speaking about the Holy Spirit. The scripture says, for I've never seen the righteous for For I've never seen. For I've never seen. For I've never seen. Somebody needs to get that. For I've never seen. For I've never seen the righteous forsake. Deeply and intimately 
intimately in your love affair relationship with Jesus. Hallelujah. Family, you got to become lost in him. Until you find not yourself. And in other words, until all of me dies. God, I give you everything of me. I give you all of me. I give you my hurts. I give you my pain. I give you my faults. I give you my failures. I give you all of me. Take all of me. Take this stinky flesh. I don't need it. I don't need it. Because this flesh does not glorify God. This flesh only glorifies the appetites and the cravings of the flesh. Of the world. People. Material things. The love of money. Not money. The love of money. When your love becomes stronger stronger for mammon and not God. For the love of men shall flow cold in the time that we are in. People will turn against each other. Families will turn against each other. People will turn against you. People will deny the faith. People will walk away from God. People will not want to hear the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because they are itching ears to hear what they want to hear. They don't want to hear the truth. Amen. The present The gospel. The kingdom message. They want things that will speak to the historical area of where they are. You know why? You know why? They don't want to change. Amen. Can I can I share this with you? And I'm closing. I just need you to release this. I'm, listen to me. There's some people. There's some people that just don't want to go up. And you're forcing and forcing and forcing and forcing. Stop forcing. You've done what you needed to do. Get out of the way. Amen. Let God take control. Will it be at work? Will it be at home? Will it be your family? Will it be your marriage? Will it be your children? Will it be in your business? Get out of the way. Hand it to God. Get out of the way. Let go. And let God be called. Get out of the way. Because if you hand it over to God, why are you putting your hand out? When I said reach out to touch the ark of the covenant, the Bible says, Being in this place with God this whole week. Sometimes it's hard to say, God, I know what your word says. But God, I'm only human. And I know I'm talking to a people. Beloved, don't set up camp in the midst of your family. I'm giving you some tools to help you. Don't set up camp in the midst of your family. 
Your valleys are not meant for you to take a bed and a pillow and lie down and sleep. But your valleys are meant for you to go through. So though I go through the valley of Baca, of weeping, it's not meant for you to take a bed and lie down. Though I might go through the valley of Akka. A double C A. Though I go through the valley of Akka. This valley of despair. Feeling despondent. The Bible says that he places in my interpretation that there is a door of hope. Amen. The door of hope is in the midst of the valley of Akka. Let me, let me, let me, let me give you this and I'm done. Are you, are you being blessed? Yes. Listen to this. Your pain is valuable. Your pain is valuable. Your pain is valuable because your pain Become somebody else's game. The enemy tried to take you out before you were even born. The enemy tried to take you out while you were still in your mother's womb. The enemy tried to take you out when you were born because of life circumstances. You didn't have it all together. Some of us were born into trauma. We didn't in Oxford. But we had to find our feet. We had to find ourselves. And everything began at your childhood. you made the long way, some choices you made wrong choices, decisions you made wrong decisions. Some of you have not let go of that because you still blame mommy and daddy for who you are and where you are. You need to let that go today. Especially when young people and youth don't get their way. They always want to do the blame game and say you don't love me. Say to the parent you don't love me. You don't love me. You don't care for me when they don't get what they want. Can you remember that you are also there one day? Can you not identify there's a pattern that's been recreated? The generational curse stops to pay by your choice. Oh, it's in the family. No, I don't want what's in the family. Oh, it's in the family you're going to have it. Oh, it's in the family you're going to go through this. Oh, it's in the family you're going to encounter that. I don't want no generation. Because now it stops today. I choose to not accept that. Today I decide under the blood of Jesus. Amen. And I choose it stops today. Because the blood that flows through me is the blood of my Jesus. Amen. Are you hearing me what I'm saying? Amen. My determined purpose is to know God. Today, what is your determined purpose? Is your determined purpose to go with God? Is your determined purpose to stay where you 
your advocate, your counselor, your mediator. It's the one that corrects you. And that one, you got to be open for correction. Amen. Those who are open for correction through the Holy Spirit, they are true children of God. That's what the Bible says. But this is where we've got to come to be loved of God. We've got to come to this place where we are led and governed by the Holy Spirit according to Romans 8 verse 14. Okay? Not led and governed by your emotions and feelings but led and governed by the the word led means governed. The word led means governed in Romans 8 14. It means governed. Right? Right? And sons of God are the mature ones. Remember I said earlier, some people just don't want to grow up. So they're not mature. So why are you that pursuing maturity are still sitting around with immature people who don't want to grow up? They're just going to weigh you down and pull you down. My determined purpose, the apostle said, my determined purpose is to do what? To know him that I may progressively become more deeply, intimately acquainted with him. You're going to come to this place where you've got to be acquainted with an intimate relationship with Jesus and not acquainted with the pastor and acquainted with the church and acquainted with the denomination and you're not acquainted with God. Oh, apostle knows I do this, so it's okay. You become too acquainted with flesh. What is God saying? What does God say about it? Can I, oh, can I leave that with you? What does God say about it? What does the word of God say about what you do? You think what you do in his right. Right in your own eyes. Right in your own understanding. But when it does not line up with the word of God, the choice or the decision that you are making and it does not line up with the word of God the Bible says there is a way that seems right unto a man but that way leads to destruction you got to choose whose way you want to go with today do you want to go your way do you want to go people's way or do you want to go God's way Beloved, come to this place where you are intimately, deeply, be acquainted with him, perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders of his person more strongly and more clearly. You see, there's a lot of distortion. There's a lot of distortion. And you family will know that, for example, with the radio station, if it's not on the accurate number of that station, right? You're going to be imbalanced in your frequency and not going to hear the station properly. But when I set it to the correct station, my frequency level is right and it's high. So what's going to happen? I'm going to hear accurately and I'm going deep. Just a few seconds. I'm going to hear accurately. You see, many people just jump by catching the first statement of the first word on social media and it's not the truth of that news. Because we have not done our investigations. What we see today, people just want to blabble, 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 blabble. And not take time to do investigations.
Amen? Right? So when I get into this place, not after the flesh, but of the spirit of God. You see, God doesn't connect to flesh, he connects to spirit. God does not answer to flesh, he answers to spirit. Because he's spirit. But with regard to your flesh, it is your responsibility not to allow sin to have dominion. And that is a daily journey with the Lord. So quickly, we got to go deeper in God. So that the level of our yearning, spending time with God, we will be able to hear God accurately. Many people are not hearing God accurately because they are not founded in a place where He wants you to be. We all over the show. And we're not taking time to spend with God. To hear what God is saying concerning that situation, concerning that problem, or concerning that person, or even concerning my life. See, the Holy Spirit will never leave you. He will never forsake you. But the Holy Spirit will also never lead you contrary to the Word of God. When you react, 
that is not the spirit of God. When you react, that is your flesh. But when you respond, your response will be to God and your response will be to the word of God. So that you will always say what the word of God says and not to act out of your flesh and say what your flesh wants to say. Is that helping somebody? Praise God. So your determined purpose must be what? To know God. So you've got to spend quality time with Him so that you know Him. You've got to take the time to spend time with Him. Praise God. Amen. And that's your responsibility. Father, I worship you this morning. I give you glory. I give you praise. I give you honor. I thank you, Spirit of the living God. Just lift your hands right now where you are. Nobody looking at us. Nobody looking at us.
Oh 